Okay, thanks for everyone coming on today. Uh, a bit late notice, but basically I had a message on Twitter on Wednesday on my Slava uh, and Aranada. I don't know if you guys were here last year when Slava came to the uh, space. Uh, that was again a very last minute thing, but Aranada said, oh, I want to come to Singapore and meet some. I'm going to be in Singapore. It'll be a good chance to meet some of the Meteor community while he's here. So we quickly exchange a few Twitter messages and then. Uh, so, see a bit more than just the GitHub profile page. Uh, so, I think today, we'll just quickly have an introduction from Aaron Oda and uh, maybe you can discuss like how he uh, got into Meteor and you know what he's doing with it, how he's doing it, and then you can talk a bit more about the projects he's, he's kind of put in place, things like Dira, which some of you guys might be using in production. Um, or we just heard that it's about 10,000 production apps using this now, so that's pretty good. It's scale, scale ready. Then there's a few interesting things coming up, like uh, the Galaxy uh, rollout for Meteor, and uh, maybe also give some insight into the roadmap for Meteor in the future. So I'll let Renata take over. Yes, thank you. Uh, like, uh, I'm not doing carefully any talk kind of thing, but I just need to discuss with you guys. So, how many guys are using Meteor production or maybe have used Meteor at all? <laughs> right, cool. So, using is any production apps, like right? so they deploy for a couple of months, right? Right, cool. So, basically, uh, we, we try Meteor, right? So, so, what I do actually, I usually try, I'm, I'm doing this blog called Meteor Hack. Meteor Hack. So, should I? I talk about other topics with media like a couple of stuff. And basically my, my area is on to scaling. So using my how to improve media scaling. So there are a lot of stuff you need to do with this scaling stuff. Uh, I try to try to simplify all this stuff. So we recently introduced something called uh, cluster. It's a kind of scale um, scaling solution and with a multi core support and so on. So and we are doing a uh, Kadira. So it's so actually using a um, Meteor with a part time. So we are selling like uh, 10,000 apps and we are processing like um, 1 billion messages per day kind of thing in matrix. So you can ask uh, something about like how to process the kind of stuff and how to store by like, using into mobile and stuff. So we can have a discussion on that. So basically these are the things I do. I occasionally do some lessons on bulletproof video. So it's a kind of advanced tutorial kind of thing. Like we have, we have a lot of uh, articles, actually lessons on like, like how to how to do some stuff, how to model data and uh, architecture stuff and so on. So basically these are the stuff and uh, so if you need to hear about how, how it is going to be in the future, the next version will come with uh, something like uh, with uh, joints, like you need to join between collections. So this is an next priority. And after that, maybe we can have uh, SQL support with Postgres and uh, MySQL. So I'm not quite sure about MySQL, but maybe, yeah, possibly. Uh, Postgres and the uh, MySQL. Postgres coming soon? Postgres, no, not soon, I think. Maybe we have to wait a couple of months, maybe four months, or maybe more than that. And the, after that, uh, maybe before the SQL, so we will have a hosting platform from Meteor. It's called um, Galaxy. So the MBG is a company working on that one. So actually, they're using, using Docker and uh, cool stuff like uh, something called Kubernetes from Google. So it's a kind of cluster management solution. So they're building Galaxy on top of that and providing a media specific function. So the, the idea is, I think, uh, like you can have your own Galaxy and put it on your hardware. And you can run on your own cluster, like you can easily deploy your apps and manage more mobile servers, like that. So that's the plan for them. So if you have any kind of questions, like what you want to talk, I can. I have more 
actually I, I know I like like 60 70% of the how committee works and other stuff going on so you can ask me and I, I can explain so we'll meet you up expert on to no, actually, media op is yeah. for the uh, it's a separate project. Uh, so okay, I'll talk about media op is a way to deploy your apps into into any server, and we can uh, we can use multiple servers as well. So it's kind of like you can uh, you can simply give configuration to a simple JSON file, and then you can simply say map set up and it will configure servers. And you can simply deploy with map deploy. So basically, Meteor app is a tool that you can uh, you can simply bootstrap a um, Meteor app and deploy it somewhere, some some hosting provider. But the Galaxy is something big, like you can control a lot of apps, apps in it. You can do like some cool stuff. So basically, Meteor app, whether you want to test them, you can deploy some easy solution. So we are not going to expand this into something big because Galaxy is the tool we are using. To. So we need to do that. So that's it. So uh, what else is coming up on that roadmap? Yeah, basically the SQL and the Galaxy. I think that's the uh, the key things for this year. Uh, maybe we we have some. Maybe Maybe there will be Angular support. Like, so Angular 2 is coming. I think Angular 2 is something great. I think mean. so there are a lot of stuff in it. So there will be some integration with Angular 2. So that means you can simply run Angular app on the front end, and back end part will be done using Medium. I think that will be something big, guy. So you can easily. So see a lot of uh, React. Yeah, there are, there are a lot of discussion on how, how we can do with React. The thing is, uh, so it's very hard to predict actually uh, what uh, React is going to do because they are building something called GraphQL and something called Relay. So it's kind of like uh, co ranging. Uh, GraphQL is kind of co ranging, runs on the client side. And so you can think like, uh, like uh, ORM kind of thing. And then uh, they have something called Relay. It's a kind of like like uh, so, so it's a kind of minimum on the client side so they are trying to capture the, uh, the client ends I think the Google and Facebook are so they are like they are trying to compete with each other for the client side frameworks kind of we I think uh, there won't be any inti official integration with um, uh, react and meteor but angular and meteor so there will be something And there's um, media forum. Have you guys okay, media forum like? I'm not quite sure the name. So it's, it's really so there are a lot of talks while here, like a lot of people talking about this one. I think we need to have a, we should do that at least once a week, once a week. So there are a lot of stuff. And there's another one called uh, Crater. Crater, right? Crater. Crater. Right. Crater. Oh, I'm sorry. So based yes, on your experience, which one is the most uh, killing point for the performance? Sorry? Which one is the most uh, heavy for the performance part? In media, right? Yeah. Um, the thing one one thing is called like uh, let's call uh, merge box. So it's something on the Meteor server. So actually merge box is something like a, so they have all data on every client on your on your on your application on the server. And merge box is kind of thing they try to op optimize for the network. So that means they're sending like uh, only the data actually the, the client needs. So because of that there are some computation on the server side. So that goes to the CPU side. So that's the issue. I think they are trying to move the merge block into the client side. So basically, there won't be any, any, any issues with that one. But I, we are quite not sure about that. So the, 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 the 
bottleneck with video is actually CPU. So there won't be any, uh, any RAM issues. Uh, the CPU is the only thing you need to focus. And, and it's quite heavy, actually, if you compare with an old app. So there will be like, you need to have more CPU power with video. Frankly, that's the, that's the thing. Which, which boiler type do you recommend? Uh, actually, actually, I'm not quite into the like, apps like, like because I'm, I'm creating packages and core stuff. stuff. So, so basically, I'm not working with much applications. But uh, I'm not like, much expert with the like uh, working with boiler plates. But, but I know something more like, like the kitchen. Your kitchen. And there's one form I invented mine, this is Media Kitchen. So it's in, they, they have GUI to create the template uh, like the packages like this. And I think you people say this is something great. And then there's another one from invented mine, but I'm not quite sure the name. Differential? Differential. Sir? Differential. Differential. Ah, differential. No, no. I think there's another one from invented mine. So they got something. Differential guys also have something like invented mine. Invented mine is the uh, iron router. Iron router, right. Okay. So they have something called like maybe I'll see a line. Yeah, this one. I'll see a line. They got this with mm -hmm. Okay, for me. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, okay. Yeah. And yeah, this thing. And so we are working, um, we are working with a new router called Flow Router. So it's, we are not competing with iron router, but something different approach when when creating apps. So we can look at so that. What are the advantages of the Yeah, the iron router basically uh, we have a lot of computation, like so. so it's it's more like it's a single solution that you can integrate your all the clients and stuff. But with uh, Flow Router, we try to like separate stuff. The router is actually doing only the routing part. So all the other stuff handled by the, the, the template layer and, and so on and other things. So that's the thing. And router is a single solution. You can do a lot of stuff with, in, within the iron router. But flow router is some single tool for routing. So that's the main premise. Is there any plan to put the routing in the core? Uh, so it's, it's not something like planning to building a, build a router inside the core. So they are trying to get iron router or something else with maybe flow router with the standard distribution. So it will be iron router, but the iron router will be coming with the media standard build. So you can use routing and quite simple. Uh, so there's no plan when it's coming or any, any stuff in that. Maybe we, we can have that. So the other thing is media. So we can't expect the when things coming up. So it's really hard to predict the roadmap. So that's how they work. No idea. Uh, which one is better? <laughs> you mean iron router or flow router? <laughs> <laughs> For me, actually, flow router is good. <laughs> but uh, I, so some, you know, I think iron router is quite good also because it's, it's very easy to start. Like no, not easy. I think it's got a lot of more resources. So examples, a lot of stuff. But with flow, flow router, we, we try we try to create this in a performance as the key key place, like improving how things rendering stuff. So there won't be any any there's no kind of lot of tutorials kind of things for flow router, but still we think it's really Is it realistic already? Yeah. So I, mean, I think I think you have a you have you in your mind you have architecture for templating routing. Yeah, 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 it, yeah, yeah. No actually it's so completed we, <laughs> we had a we have we had so we call it flow architecture, but the yeah. problem is that there are so we had a, our own uh, component layer as well. Yeah. But the thing is, that in the component templating layer, there are a lot of stuff there. So there are React and there are a lot of lot of stuff. So I think it's so for us the, the best thing is to stay out uh, out from the this kind of stuff like from the templating area. So we we have the pro router. So it's this is production ready. And a couple of guys using that, and uh, actually we are using that one for the Kadira and Bulletproof Media. So, yeah, that's the thing. So we have pretty good documentation here on the README. So maybe, so 
subscribe and we have a section on So do I have to like compensate with other like like your flow architecture component? No, no, no. We don't need to use component. I can use no templates. They do templates. So we can we can show you some. There's some, oh, there's some other packages that depend on the iron router, so like yeah, yeah. So the one is called like like uh, one the authentication kind of thing. User account. User, User account. Yeah. Actually, they're working with the uh, plural integration, so they have done like a 50 percent of the work is complete. So we can have that one now in one month. So I think that's the uh, the thing. Actually, everyone is looking for. The thing is, I'm not actually using uh, these those kind of apps because I'm not much into the applications. So that's the thing. I'm not quite familiar with. Uh, so you know, I haven't used actually. Mm, maybe. Um, based on your experience, Sorry? based on your experience, uh, do you have examples of multi-tier uh, meter application? Okay. Meaning that you have the web uh, app front end and so on and that you have Behind the scenes, we have a much more complex business logic, workflows, different data stores, and so on. Do you have some examples in mind? Actually, we are trying that kind of thing. So, Hadira, actually, it's a, it's a kind of simply on, on the front end, it's a single app. It's mm -hmm. simply showing the graphics. And then, behind the scene, we are on Kafka. So, we are collecting the matrix via node on application. So, we are putting in the Kafka, it's a queue. I will use Kafka so from the like from LinkedIn. So they, they can process like in various like kind of data. So we are putting that into Kafka, and then then we are doing some background workers using this Kafka queue and then aggregating matrix. Then then we are putting into the memory, and then from the media app, so we are getting data, aggregating like we are simply. Change the process kind of thing. So yeah, yeah, you get the data, data. and then the here. And the connect to the our main main UI using DDP. So DDP is a protocol between uh, the media client and the server. So alert system is powered to the DDP. And we have email reporting. It's a, it's a, something similar. Okay. So you can have a lot of school stuff. Like you can say, DDP is the like microservices protocol kind of thing for the real time apps. So we can think like that. So if you're planning to do uh, microservices with, uh, so how many guys know about microservices? Something new? You, you don't know. Right? So microservices is something like so. When you're building a PHP kind of application, you put everything in, inside that. Maybe in real time, I'm not uh, maybe. So with Microsoft, microservices, you 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 separate things like your email services is different, your like uh, API is different, the UI part is different. Oh. So and you, you're connecting each, each other with other APIs. So that microservices. So. Uh, okay, uh, question related to microservices architecture. 
um, the traditional approach for API is REST full based yeah. API. Yeah. But now with DDP, it's a very different story. Yeah. Yeah. We have a lot of digestion and caching and so on that is done very well automatically. Yeah. But, but you just need, need to have a random socket open. Yeah. 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 So my question is. In which case, Peptot will still keep the good old fashioned REST and can fill the eye versus the yeah, yeah, yeah. one. Okay. I think it's really, really, uh, really uh, uh, hard to tell you. So that means you have two applications, so you can send like get a very efficient when you have socket connection open. But if, if you are trying to open a lot of sockets, at the same time, it's not kind of a good thing. But I think internally, so when you are opening sockets, like we have to open. You don't have to open like hundred, I mean not hundred, like thousand, ten thousand sockets. Communicate with two different applications. I think then uh, socket this is a good idea. But if you are it's getting a lot of stuff, the problem is socket. It's like uh, you need to manage this socket so because in REST like, you simply send a request. If that fails, send again. But with sockets, something different. You need to work hard mm -hmm. sometimes. So it's. It's not a win miss. Uh, I, I can't say use this, use this now. Like, you need to work on that. It's hard to answer the question. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask a more fun end question? Yeah, sure. Because I was wondering, like, because a lot of people want to make like mobile apps, so I'm wondering, like, is there any integration for like Cordova or HammerJS or any of those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all. Official, official integration with Cordova. Oh. oh. Then you can simply, like, you can run on iOS, you can, can simply run on I think version one and one at all. Since they like like in November or December, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean this like last year. Last year, last year. Oh, okay, it's slow. Even if you don't have the idea of my Android or Android. Android. Only iOS and Android. I think it's still like. We actually did some experiment with uh, those attacks, with uh, this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I did say Sika video. Uh, so Sika is a kind of firewall, so kind of cloud player, like not ex exactly cloud player. I, mean, so I can show you some demo. So have, you, have you guys seen this before? <laughs> No, right, I can show you. Right. Oh. In this video, I'll show you how to uh, take down a media app oh, just cool. using the new your browser. So we are Because uh, you can simply, so someone is running a mix panel, so we can simply run a script on the, on the mix panel and we can simply charge them at the account. Like simply we need to run a follow up with this kind of stuff. So we can simply charge this uh, mix panel account, increase their, their, their limits. So these kind of attacks are very, very, so, so it is familiar. For everyone. So we, we the Sika is kind of like you can simply protect that one with the capture. So that's the idea. So we implement the like uh, core stuff. So you can see, I can show you that. Maybe like So when you are running the. Uh, yeah. 
attack again this time. So try it in a couple of seconds. If you like in five, this is mouse is coming something new, some yeah. malicious stuff. Then your your mouse will be not your IP address. So so yes, yeah, some function is like this. And a lot of people have like started to talk about what's this thing, uh, are we going to take this into co or kind of stuff. So maybe the they have some plans to integrate this into Go, maybe some other package, rate limit and kind of thing. But I'm not quite sure when, when that will come. So now we have Sika, so we are trying to improve that one. So right now, this is a package editing with your app, but we are trying to move this into a board dancer layer. So we can uh, we can protect the your request from the IP tables kind of thing, like so from the network layer. So that's the the plan. So we are trying to do it. So, and we are working with uh, like uh, some Niki specific uh, uh, like load balancing solution. So right now, when you are running real time applications, so it's really hard to scale. Like because uh, when it's, it's normal API kind of thing, normal web application, we can simply send the request. So we can simply like count based on the number of requests. But in, in real-time applications, the, there are open, open socket connections. There are a lot of stuff happening behind the scene. So sometimes a uh, number of connections is not a good idea to load balance. And we are planning on a distributed kind of load balancer. You can simply identify the CPU usage and route accordingly. And it will be added into the tool. You can simply drop that into Kubernetes. So that's the future kind of stuff we are planning. So it will be not only for Meteor, it's kind of for the all the all the uh, data time applications. So what are your all the other stuff? Or oh, basically for the web server kind of thing. So I go Do you have some cluster uh, yeah. packages Yeah, we have a cluster <coughs> packages. Yeah, it's when you get through your all you get have three points. Last video. So this one is my, my project like media class thing. I think I did the first commit in like two thousand thirteen or maybe two thousand maybe before that. This is class is something different, right? So this is cluster like the units is early days of Meteor. Um, you're trying to use a multi server application running on multiple service servers. This is the tool. But this is something out there and you don't need to try that one. Mm, we should not try. Right. Uh, the next one is cluster. Actually this is the uh, the distributed load balancer. It's in inside your, your application. So the only thing is right. So it's I can use on that one. So now, so this is normal thing. We have uh, your DNS provider. We go to the load balancer. This is normal. Thing we are trying to improve. So, so it's not something like Nginx do. We are trying to like decentralize things, kind of distributed kind of thing. So it's hard to compare with the Nginx which are proxy and this thing. And we have the multi core support as well. And actually we did a lot actually we did a performance test I think for this one. Uh, right. Ah sorry? 
Was it down the bottom of the screen? No, uh, I think I did a separate. Uh, So we have uh, like, so we did with the uh, one like you can see the so just look at this this one. So we have three servers running. Each server is processing like 2,500 connections. 2,500. Passenger, yeah, on the Ruby. So we compare with that one with passenger. Uh, like we have uh, not this one. So we are running with passenger. I think the performance is uh, is, is comparable, it's similar. So like we have. Same performance with the compared with the passenger. Like we are, this is the payload size. Did you see single four, single four? We are processing like around 2,700. Uh, like passenger four workers, so running four workers. So we get a uh, 3.5x performance gain. Like using four workers, and we cluster. We got 3.6, uh, and we have payload of 200 kb. So that's it. And with, with, with passenger, actually, they are trying to proxy the request to the each individual host. With running cluster, they are trying to like send the actual socket connection directly to the like underground worker. And so there is no proxy in between cluster. Actually, this is not something we do. Like in the node, they also they have their own cluster package. So they do the same thing. So we did something similar. So actually, you asked why we can't use the Node.js cluster, the Node version. So because that version does not support the sticky sessions. Sticky sessions. So we implement the that part, and that's why you need to use this one instead of that. All right. All right. This, these are the kind of hobby hobby projects we do at MediaX, like trying to do something crazy stuff and trying to see how it works or not. There are a lot of things we have done, so this is, these are things that actually worked. Uh, there are other stuff. How many people you got at MediaX? Uh, like four. Four people. Including me. We are trying to expand, uh, but uh, we can't, no, we can't decide. Either we are working with like Niki only or we are expanding to other platforms. So, like that's the idea we are trying to consider. Uh, we are working for Niki real stuff or maybe something different will happen soon. I read your blog entry about okay. continuous integration yeah. where you say yeah. it's uh, working on like uh, and you explain about it. Right, right. Coach, coach. Yeah, coach. Yeah, coach. The like it's the, the early, early days of early testing. Days of testing. Like, okay. yeah. Actually, uh, uh, regarding the integration yeah. yeah. concept, concept. Yeah. is it something like, like one like click, one click? Uh, your your local to local to production, production. or, or uh, yeah, uh, yeah. You, you can think like that, but like that. But not the ideal case. Like right. you can simply you can simply deploy a deploy a new code to the your server. Your Code repository, code repository, and then it, it yeah. will grab that code yeah. and run the whole your test, and then deploy your your, your, your service. service. But service. so in so in a real situation, real situation, we can think like yes, that it will happen, but but it's not like, it's not uh, like uh, something, uh, something you can something try because something something pushing something, something in production, production is something very big, very big. 
you need to always need to always tweak manually. Otherwise, it's otherwise it's small change, small change. You can simply do that one. But if you are, but if you are doing like production apps or something, but you can try to do some staging, staging. Development, development kind of projects, kind of projects, and they stay projects using this country. So in this case, it's fusing code yeah. or any traffic. Yeah. Traffic. Yeah. What's the measurement? Yeah, it's yeah. work for the uh, development. Like, 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 when you're trying to do some application, you are trying to have a different environment. Staging, staging, development, development, production, production, and staging you can do. Testing for the testing for the other So, so I think I, I think I, it's need to try that. to try that. You can simply you can reduce the time reduce for the time for the development. Development. Yeah. 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 But you need, but you need. You should not try to not deploy try to your, your code itself into production using content integration. So that's something you need to avoid. So you can try it with. Uh, Development kind of scenario, and now uh, the, the this one is really good. Like for the continuous integration, it's continuous. Uh, it's good for the packages actually. So let's say something like VT cluster. So we are having the all the like let's say not not cluster, let's say flow router. So actually, I'm not trying to see all the uh, code. I'm not running the all the code like testing each thing. So, yeah, pull request. So there's a uh, one with group uh, support thing. So we have the all uh, like things happening. So in GitHub, you can see the uh, at the end like so all the tests has been passed for the every each and every commit. So we can simply see things are working. Right. We don't need to run our code, our own. So that's the benefit of having a continuous integration. But you should not use continuous integration for the deployment. So just the only idea. But actually, what the uh, what the provider like called ship promises, they promise you like easy deployment ah. and this kind of thing. So I was thinking like, is it really uh, worth the, the investment? Because actually, what ship is. Uh, Ruby Rails originated or they on the they begin on Ruby and Ruby, Ruby, Ruby. but now they but say now that they are that they are then they are then thinking like thinking like okay so, so is it really what they really what they say? Ah, okay, ah, okay. So, so we code ship actually, we can run, uh, run our own shell script. So that's, that's we can add any can kind of uh, application support. So that's why they say they support every every platform. But not for uh, production. You can all use that one, but uh, it's not ideal in a real. You have a bit of integration with the other platforms as well. You guys try to do some demos here, right? Yeah, if anybody wants to show what they're working on. Oh, right. Yes, I have. Actually, I have a demo with the flow.